Hey everyone, Bella here from Self Publishing School, and we all know the saying that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, which is great advice that doesn't actually apply to books. And if that means if you actually want to sell your book, because what author doesn't, you actually have to know how to attract readers with your cover, because unfortunately, readers, and even you, judge a book by its cover, and that includes the title. But how do you come up with a perfect title that makes people want to read your book? We'll cover that in today's video. There are so many different types of ways to choose a great book title for your book. The process is going to differ a little bit from fiction to nonfiction, so in this video we're going to focus on how to choose the perfect book title for your nonfiction book. Your title has to really pop, it has to speak to readers and their pain points specifically in order to make them at least click on the book to learn more. But if you nail this process, especially number six, you are gonna be in for a treat of book sales. So how do you do that? I'm gonna walk you through the exact process we use here at Self Publishing School in order to come up with the best book title for your book in order to attract the right readers. Because as you know, attracting the right readers who are gonna benefit the most from your books is what's really going to make your book grow and skyrocket in sales and reviews. So let's get started with number one. List all of your potential books book ideas. Yes, everything you can think of, get a notebook, open a spreadsheet, open a document, whatever process you use to jot down ideas, write down every book title idea that you think could fit. Nothing is too crazy, nothing is too simple. What we really want to do in this stage is get your mind moving in the right direction of thinking about what ideas could your book cover? What ideas does it cover? What you want it to cover? And how can you best translate that into a simple, clever, but very telling title. A few things to think about while you're doing this is one, is the title clear and concise? You wanna make sure that people who see the title know what your book's gonna be about without having to read the subtitle or reading the book description. It's really easy to get caught up in thinking of really clever and interesting names. And while those are really interesting, they don't benefit your book in the way that a really clear and concise title will. So you can easily bring some cleverness into your book title idea so long as people can still tell what your book is about from that idea. So make a list of a bunch of them. We recommend a minimum of 20 different book title ideas. Yes, that many because you never know what you're gonna to gravitate toward. Number two, while you're doing this, think about memorability and alliteration. So these are two different elements that are really gonna help people remember your book title. When they see it on social media or they just are seeing it skimming through Amazon, are they gonna remember it? Is it something that they're gonna be sitting down thinking back to when they were searching for books on Amazon, and is that one that they're gonna be able to recall pretty easily? The best way to do that is with alliteration. So what is alliteration? Alliteration is basically the use of the same letters or sounding letters within the title. This makes it really easy for people to remember. So what does that look like when it comes to titles? Now I'm gonna give you a few fiction examples here just because those are the few that pop into my mind and keep in mind that these ones come to mind because of the alliteration. So think of things like Gone Girl, uh, Dr. Doolittle, Black Beauty, Peter Pan. Those types of titles are really easy to remember, first of all, because they're only two words, but second of all, because they use great alliteration. The idea behind this is that people can remember it easier if it all has, or most of it has, the same consonant or letter starting the word. So try to think about those different types of variations when you are creating your list of different book titles. And you can even take book titles that you think might work and change the words or use synonyms to get that alliteration down. Step number three, take that big list and narrow it down into the top three that you really like that are really clear, concise, and maybe even a little clever and ones that have some alliteration in there if you did come up with some great alliterative titles. One of the main things you have to focus in this area is not to just pick the title that speaks to you, but think about what your readers are going to get from the title. It's really easy to think of a title that you like, that you find interesting, but is somebody who is best fit to read your book going to be intrigued by that title. So get outside yourself, put yourself in your reader's shoes and ask yourself, is this something that I would read if I was somebody else 
who is looking to benefit from what your book is about. Pick those top three and then move on into the next step. Number four, which is getting feedback on your title. Now it can be really scary putting your book title out into the world and asking people to basically pick the one that they would choose. You don't necessarily have to do this um, on a broad spectrum by any means. Our own students here at Self Publishing School have the mastermind community that we have put together for a lot of reasons like this. They post their book title in the mastermind community and get a lot of different feedback on which is best, what sounds better, and what people are most attracted to. That way you get an outside opinion that is going to be better than your own because you can't really get outside of yourself to choose what is the best. You need an unbiased opinion. And that is where outside sources come into play. You can send this to family members, you can post this on Facebook, you can post this in different writing groups that you're a part of and get feedback. And the book title that gets the most votes or people are intrigued with the most is really gonna be the best one because those are the people who would pick up your book based on that title? Step number five is to craft a subtitle that is beneficial for your book. Now, fiction books don't necessarily have subtitles, whereas nonfiction do. And that's because sometimes your book needs a little bit something extra to explain the benefit of the book. Now think of the title as being what the book is about and the subtitle being the benefit gained from reading the book. It's really that simple and I want you to go through the same processes and the steps that I listed for the title but for your subtitle. Now the thing with this subtitle is that you want it to be very clear. You want the benefit to be undeniable and you want people to really understand how they're going to benefit from reading your book. The title may be intriguing, the subtitle is what's going to get them to click if that makes sense. The title is gonna be what makes people pause. The subtitle is gonna be what makes people click and read more. And the great thing about this is that you can get feedback from your title separately and your subtitle separately. And then if there are mixed opinions, you can get feedback of it as a whole um, again and just ask people what combination is the best, which would you pick up? And that can lead you to the best and the perfect title for your book. And the last step for finding the perfect book title is to ask yourself if you would buy it. Is this a book title that you would be like, wow, this is, this is intriguing, I wanna learn more, I wanna click on this, I wanna buy this. If it's not, then you really have to do some digging and figure out how can you change this title to make sure that it is impactful for you as well. Now your audience is obviously very important, but your name is on the book, this book, is everything that you know and you want the world to see. So if you wouldn't buy this book based on the title, how could you expect other people to? And that's all I've got for you today on this topic of finding the perfect book title. Ultimately, this is really gonna make the difference between somebody who scrolls right on past and somebody who stops, clicks, and buys your book. So take the time to get it right. And oftentimes we recommend that you wait until you're done writing the book before you try to title it just because then you have a better idea of what the book is actually about. If you're ready to get started on your book and you're ready to come up with a topic, an outline, and actually write it, we have a free training for you down below in the description. Click on that, absolutely free. It's a great webinar instructed by Chandler Bolt, six-time best-selling author and owner of an eight-figure business built from the books he's written. So check that out. Make sure to give this video a like if you like what you learned today, if you learned something new, if you found this process helpful, and comment down below what your thoughts are on this process of figuring out a book title. Are you somebody who likes to figure it out first? Are you somebody who struggles a lot with the book title? Put your comments down below. Let us know how you figure out what the best book title is for you. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Cat Wanders. I joined Self Publishing School, I believe, in February of 2017. Self Publishing School was literally the best investment I've ever made because it was like the catalyst that started this snowball effect for everything for me. And I literally wouldn't be where I am today with